Thin layer chromatography, or TLC, is a commonly used analytical technique that helps to identify components of a mixture or to assess the purity of a sample. TLC is considered one of the fastest, least expensive, simplest, and easiest chromatography technique. TLC system consists of a TLC chamber, TLC plate, and a mobile phase. TLC plate is composed of a plate of solid support, generally plastic or glass, that has been coated with a thin layer of a polar absorbent, either silica or alumina. The separation relies on the relative affinity of compounds towards the both phases. The compounds in the solvent, which is the mobile phase, move over the surface of the thin layer, which is the stationary phase. The movement occurs in such a way that the compounds which have a higher affinity to the stationary phase move slowly, while the other compounds travel fast. Therefore, the separation of the mixture is attained. On completion of the separation process, the individual components from the mixture appear as spots at respective levels on the plates. The compounds with less polarity can move up further towards the solvent front because they will have weak interactions with the stationary phase. On the other hand, more polar compounds will strongly interact with the silica membrane so they will not be able to run up as much. On completion of the separation, each component appears as spots separated vertically. Each spot has a retention factor, or F, which is expressed as distance traveled by sample over distance traveled by solvent. The factors affecting retention factor are the solvent system, amount of sample spotted, absorbent, and temperature. In this experiment, we use thin layer chromatography silica gel 60 by Merck. We cut this rectangular shaped piece for our experiment. In this experiment, we have five different samples as D alanine, D cysteine, D serine, and two unknown mixtures. We always use a pencil to mark the TLC plate because the ink in pens is soluble. Spots in which the samples will be loaded should not be very close to each other because in that case, samples may overlap with each other. Also, in order to eliminate the effect of evaporation, spots should be distanced from the edges of the plate. In this experiment, we will have five samples. We add one microliter of samples to each spot. The sample solutions all have two milligrams of amino acid per milliliter. The first sample is D-alanine. The second one is D-cysteine. Third one is D-serine. And the rest of the two samples have unknown mixtures with one or two of these D amino acids. We will identify the content of these unknown mixtures at the end of the video. Next, we have the solvent, the TLC running buffer. This buffer has N-butanol, acetic acid, and water with 12 to 3 to 5 ratio respectively. We now add the solvent to the TLC chamber. The level of the solvent should be below the sample levels, otherwise sample may dissolve in the solvent. We then place the plate into the beaker carefully with the help of a tweezer. Then, we close the beaker with a lid to avoid evaporation. Now, the solvent, in other words the mobile phase, will begin to rise up the plate, which is the stationary phase. We will let the solvent rise up until there is 5-10mm to 10 millimeter space at the top of the plate, 
took around an hour for the solvent front to be completed. Now that the solvent front formed, we take the TLC plate out and leave it to dry. It's important to mark the solvent front level while it is still apparent. Make sure to mark with a pencil. In some cases, a fluorescent powder is also mixed in with the absorbent to aid with visualization. However, in our case, we will use a stain called Ninidrin to visualize the samples. After we dry the TLC plate, the Ninidrin is applied. As amino acids are colorless compounds, they can be detected on the chromatogram with the help of Ninidrin reagent. Ninidrin is widely selected for its high sensitivity. Ninhydrin is applied with the help of a micropipette. However, a better way to apply ninhydrin could be with the help of a spray. After the application of ninhydrin reagent, the TLC plate now has visible spots. Now, we will calculate the RF value for these spots and we will try to identify the unknown mixtures. By using Microsoft PowerPoint, we identified the distance traveled by the solvent front as 14.1 cm. If you can remember, our first sample was the alanine. So this first spot that we see on the very left should belong to the alanine. When we measured this level, we found the distance traveled by the alanine as 6.1 cm. Then, we calculated the retention factor for this D-alanine. When we divided 6.1 with 14.1, we found the retention factor for D-alanine as 0.43. We then did the same calculation for our second sample, D-16. The distance traveled by D-16 was 3.13 cm. Then, by dividing 3.13 with 14.1, we found the retention factor value for D16 as 0.22. The third sample that we loaded onto the TLC plate was D serine. The distance traveled by D serine has been found as 5.1 cm. And the retention factor for D16 is calculated by dividing 5.1 with 14.1. Then RF value for D serine found as 0.36. Our fourth sample was an unknown mixture. So in this lane, we identified two distinct spots. In order to identify these spots, we first measured how much they traveled from the baseline and then calculated retention factor values for each. Retention factor value for the first unknown compound has been found as 0.22. And the retention factor value for the second unknown compound has been calculated as 0.41. Second unknown mixture seems to have a single compound. To identify what this compound is, retention factor for this unknown compound tree has been calculated and found as 0.36. We tabulated our findings for comparison. As the retention factors for both D16 and unknown compound 1 were identical, we identified this unknown compound as D16. The RF value for unknown compound 2 was very similar to that of the alanines. So we identified unknown compound 2 as the alanine. So we can conclude that the content of mixture 1 were consisting of both the cysteine and the alanine. As the retention factor of unknown compound 3 was identical with the RF value of the serine, we identified this compound as the serine. So our final sample mix 2 had only the serine in it. Retention factor of polar compounds are smaller than retention factor of nonpolar compounds. We can corroborate this by looking at this amino acid table on the left and comparing the retention factors of D-alanine with D-cysteine and D-serine. D-alanine has a nonpolar side chain, thus it is nonpolar. Compared with D-cysteine and D-serine, it has a higher RF value. So with this experiment, we identified amino acids with different polarities and some unknown mixtures by conducting a thin layer chromatography protocol.